I'm Reverend Dr. K.E. Holmes, and I have with me one of the most special guests on the planet. Say your name. Sayla. Yes. Now, Sayla, part of why she's a special guest is what this program is today. Because, you know, I generally tell you when I come on the program that you, you, you're a person of excellence. Well, right here is a person of excellence. Now, what I'm going to tell us, we, we adults, we grown-ups, especially those of us who are leaders in the kingdom, members in God's kingdom of the body of Christ, which you are, you belong to the body of Christ. Is that right? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And she knows it. Uh, <laughs> Sailor knows it. And I'm going to deal with some things concerning Sailor that is true of people of excellence being born in these times, which is a little bit different than the people of excellence born in the times when I was having children or when I was even being born or when my mother was being born. One of the things that we people of excellence tend to not always understand is that we're born for our times. When you wake up in the morning, you're not thinking about the times in the earth, are you? See? In that, she's normal. That's not what's on her mind. I should have asked her before the program, what's on your mind when you wake up in the morning? That um, God's um, detecting me. Did you say protecting you or? Protecting me. Yeah, okay. We people of excellence, we generally have things on our mind. And because we're so used to being us, we don't necessarily know that it's so special and so wonderful the way God deals with us. We, we recognize, I think, that it's special that God does deal with us. Do you know that? That that's special. But do you know that that makes you special? Ah, good. I didn't know that for me personally. And I still struggle with it. But some of the things that I want to share for those of us who are grown, and especially raising people of excellence or ministering to people of excellence, one thing that I want to let us know is that uh, we in the body of Christ, we in the of the church, and also of the churches, We always want to let them grow up and train them for the ministry, for soul winning, for evangelism. Do you even know? I bet you do know what that word means. You've heard it. Evangelism? I don't know what that word is. Okay. We train. It's soul winning. Winning souls. Are you a soul winner? And she says it with a smile, too. (laughs) The thing of it is, is we tend to want to, yes, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart, you know. And uh, we tend to want to wait for you wonderful person of excellence to grow up into are. The thing of it is, you came here who you are. You're not trying to be who you are. You're busy being who you are. Do you wake up trying to be somebody else? And even if it crosses her mind, that would even be because of other things. You know, sometimes you have friends that can do things and you want to be able to do what they do. And that's fine. I, I always wanted to play the piano the way I could hear other people play. I can play the piano. But I can't play the way some other people can play that I wish I could. 
I can't even play the way she knows my son, Ian. He is a master musician and he can play. I can't play like he can play. I was just trying it yesterday. I'm not trying to be Ian, but I'm trying to play like he can play. So Sometimes you want to be able to do things that other people can do. The thing of it is, always know that no matter what, I want to make sure that not only you're reminded, but that you are a person of excellence. Now, is excellent or excellence a word you're familiar with? I don't know what that word is. Okay, well, it's kind of like um, getting an A++. Very good. Yeah, that's right. A++ is like, A is the best, A is good, A is good, but then a plus is better than that, and plus plus is better than that, better than that, better than that. That's what excellence is. Okay, so you're a person who's A, really, 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 really good, and then plus, way better than that. And then another plus, way, 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 way better than that. But you don't wake up thinking that, do you? You do? Wow, that's good. Now that's different. Which I wonder if I get to talk to more of people your age, people of excellence, children of excellence, that um, are those of you born... In the time that you're born in, pardon me, and in the times, which we don't ever know that till looking back till it's history. We don't think of ourselves as making history, unless you do. Do you think that you're making history every day? I don't know big words. Ah. You know what history is, yes? I heard it somewhere. Yeah. She, she's in school, and she also does extremely well in school, which is another thing children of excellence do. Um, even when they might have a problem, like my, brother's, my older brother's a genius, but he stuttered. Do you know anybody in the Bible who maybe stuttered? Oh, you haven't heard about it. Moses. Yeah. Do you know the story that he kept telling God I can't talk when God was? Yeah. That's part of what that was about. He just didn't think that he could talk so well. He was he was grown. He wasn't he wasn't a, a child. When God's asking him, actually, God was telling him, not asking him. It's just God's nice to us. And he doesn't. He doesn't uh, tell us what what to do. He tells us what to do. He tells us so that we know what we should be doing. And in his case, God's letting him know, I want you to speak for me. And he's like, oh. So you don't want to obey God? Well... That's the way I see it looking back. But when you're living it, I don't think he was trying to disobey God. Some things, when you, when you live them out, it feels one way, it seems one way, and then when you get past it and look back, you understand some other things about it. And I don't think he was trying to disobey God. And yet, that's what he was doing. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. Now that's my big concern for the times that we live in right now. That we, people of excellence, we hardly ever mean to disobey God. I mean, not on purpose. 
You wouldn't disobey God on purpose, would you? Never. (laughs) See? See? We all feel that way. And yet, we just do things. Sometimes it's with good intentions. Sometimes it's because we understand something without all of the information. Kind of like, um, well, I don't know that you go into the freezer. You're tall enough to get on a chair and go into the freezer. But if, if we wanted ice cubes, and you do know that you have to pour the water in, whatever you're going to put it in to make ice cubes, and you have to wait a while. Now, maybe you're smarter than me. Do you know how long you have to wait before it's ice? Well, you said it like a question. I don't know either. And because it's always longer than I want to wait, I have to make myself forget about it so I not keep checking and checking and checking and checking. That's what I want. (laughs) Yeah. So I make myself forget, which also means that I don't know how long it takes water to freeze. I can look it up. And I probably have looked it up. But I don't keep it in my head because that's not important information to me to keep. We people of excellence do that. The thing of it is, God tells us things. And it's always for our good. You know that, yes? And... Almost always, when it's people of excellence that he's telling, it's for things that even if he told us, we wouldn't know what he's talking about. The way that if if I told you how plastic is made and how um, the resins in plastic, well, that's just like, what? Yeah, that look on your face, like, uh, (laughs) and... Yet, I could be telling you everything true and fact, but it doesn't make sense if it's not something that you know about. Or, for example, when when you were born, uh, microwaves were in use. You know what a microwave oven is, yes? Yeah, okay. The thing of it is, it was then and is right now, looking at the plastic, horrible to me. That by the time you were born, there were plastic bottles for babies that you were supposed to put in the microwave to heat up. You know, just to get them warm. Plastic? Yeah. There's some right now. Oh, okay. You know, baby bottles. You've seen plastic baby bottles, yes? Yeah, my sister drinks them. Yeah, which I'm sorry I said that because that's absolutely appalling to me. That's absolutely horrible to me. But you don't think anything of it. It's not horrible to you. Right? There's there's no reason for it to be horrible to you. Is that correct? Is that right? Okay. And I, I apologize to you now because ever since I was your age, and I don't know if you want to tell how old you are, do you? Want to tell everybody how old you are? Only if you want to. Seven. Ah. When I was seven, back then people told me I use big words. Can you imagine when I was seven? Now I'm in my 70s. Is that old to you? (laughs) She's sweet. I love her. I love her anyway. I've loved her before, since before she was born. I love her, love her, love her. But that... Now I love you, plus, 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 plus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but when I was seven, I was told I used big words. And and it upset people. I hope I'm not upsetting you if I use words that you don't know what that is. And even to this day, um, my comrades, pastors and apostles, tell me that uh, I need to talk more like Jesus because he talked in small syllables and not big words, which is absolutely true. Yes, it is. Resurrection is the longest, biggest word he used. He used small words 
that anybody, everybody could and should understand. And yet, most of the time, people didn't know what he was talking about. So even using small words, the thing of it is, is part of why people, and I mean leaders, leaders, didn't know what he was talking about, is because we think we're doing the right thing, we think we're following the scriptures, but we're following according to us and our good idea. The thing of it is, right now, in these times that we live in, and you wouldn't know this until you live and look back, like right now you have seven years that you can look back and understand some things that you might not have understood. Maybe right now you understand things about school since you've been doing school for a little while now and good at it. I graduated. Oh, what did you graduate? First grade. Wow. I got kicked out of first grade. Yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. And saying that you would think if they kicked me out of first grade, they had a good reason. <laughs> She's a thinker. She is a thinker. Sayla is a thinker. Well, I'll tell you now, I actually got into six, uh, uh, first grade early, and... Um, but I got kicked out because I wouldn't do what they said. They gave me a big, big fat pencil. And I was supposed to trace the letters. I wasn't going to do it. I don't, I didn't know it then the way I know it now. And I'm going to use a word that you might not know. I was insulted. You know what that means? Mm-hmm. I didn't know what insult was either, but I do know I was insulted. I was totally insulted. I had no idea what the word meant, and I didn't know that those feelings were that. Looking back, I know. I was insulted because I have a big brother, like you have a little sister, and you teach your little sister things. You do? Yeah, my big brother taught me things. Now, my big brother's three years older than me, and he taught me how to write. Every time he went to school, he'd come home and he'd teach me what he learned that day. So by the time I got to first grade, I knew third grade stuff. And in third grade, you, you don't use a big fat pencil, and you don't trace an A, which is how I thought of it. You can see I had a bad attitude about it. I didn't want to trace it. And I'm, I'm my by the time I got to... To first grade, I knew how to write cursive. Well, you're the big sister. I had a big brother. So I teach my little sister how to do it? Yes. You teach her what you know how to do. You teach your little sister what you know. And now she sings A, B, C, D. There you go. Well, by the time I got to first grade, because I have a big brother... Who had already taught me all that stuff. And I, I can look back now and say I didn't want to waste time. I didn't think that. It's just the feelings. But I remember that I wasn't going to try to this big fat pencil. Because my brother had taught me to write with a, a small pencil and even an ink pen. Which my, my, the grown-ups in my life did not want a little chuck girl like me. A little child to have a pen. You don't give a pen. You don't give a pen to your baby sister. Right. And if she can't picks one up because she sees you with one, you usually take it from her. And uh, she might scream if you do that. Might she? <laughs> yeah, me. That's what. That was me. I was the one that when something was done that I didn't agree with. I just had a fit. I didn't know that 
Now, looking back, I understand that. But when I was busy screaming, I just didn't like that you took my pen or you took whatever it was that I thought I could have because Big Brother has it. If, if you have it, why shouldn't she have it? Now, you know why she shouldn't have it. Because she's embarrassing herself? Yeah, or do other things with it that it's not, that's not what it's for. But she's not thinking that. She might get to think it when she's seven. But not now. Now, she looks at you and she knows what she can do. I don't want me to... Girl, I want Leah to stay little. You wanted to stay little. I have a feeling that my 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 big brother felt that way about me. But I can promise you that I didn't want to stay little. I did not want to stay little. Because the only thing I knew about little, and I hope your sister doesn't feel this, is that everybody makes you do things you don't want to do. If I, like she probably wants to be in here with us right now. Oh, yeah. You think so? <laughs> the thing about when you're little, nobody lets you do. At least that's what the way that I understood it. People don't let you do. And even when, if I got into a room, if it wasn't where the grown-ups wanted me, then they'd move me out. And I'd scream. What I want you to know, people of excellence is that we're living in a time, and I want you to know this about you. You're born in a time where your purpose is about things way past anything that you understand. The only thing is, as a person of excellence, the things that you're born for are way past anybody understands. People of excellence move in things that other people don't think about. You think in ways that most people don't think. You're seven. And you don't think like most seven-year-olds. The nice thing is usually people of excellence will have, when you're younger, I shouldn't say will have, can have, other people of excellence around you. The nice thing is, children of excellence, you're usually born of parents of excellence. You know that about your parents, that they're the A++ people? My parents are not good. They're very, 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 very yes! good. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I mean when I say people of excellence. They're not just good. They're not just very good. They're very, 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 very good. And she's not just being a child, I want you to know. People of excellence, that's part of what I always want to tell you. When I, I tell you to look in men of valor and look at the things that they do. And I know I was giving you that word, valor, so that when you read it in the scripture or when somebody reads it to you, that you understand that they're, they're people that think beyond where... The average person thinks, and you usually see them as soldiers. And soldiers are trained, you know, just like in school. You're trained. You're trained to know how to do things. The thing of it is, a soldier who is also a person of excellence, he not only knows his training, he knows it inside out. Do you know what I mean when I use that expression? To know a thing inside out? Yeah. I mean, he knows it up and down and in and out and backwards and forwards. He just knows it without having to think about it. And it also, the soldier who is a person of excellence, when something needs to be done, they're automatically going to think of a solution that every other trained soldier who's good in their training, they're not going to think of that. And what they think of is going to be like, oh, wonderful, good. I make, I made, that's the word I made. <laughs> wonderful and good. I put it together, make it one word, wonderful, good. To express how people of excellence just are. 
The thing of it is, do you think all day long how wonderful good you are? My sister knows how to say Sayla. And I'm teaching how to say Sayla is very good. Yes. The thing of it is, is I would want to say that you might know you're good. And you might know that you're A++, especially since you have a little sister that you can teach things to. And that makes you know that, ah, oh, that's good, that's good. The thing of it is, I'm absolutely sure that you don't know just how wonderful, good, good, very, 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 very good you are. For example... When you were a baby, and this is the heaven-earth side, that most of us don't know enough scripture. The scripture is there to know, but most of us, and I mean us, I'm talking about leaders in church, leaders in the kingdom, in the body of Christ, who read the word, stay in the word. Most of us don't understand that children come here as who they are. You come here with something that the Bible says what God ordained and I know you hear the word ordained. Do you know what it means? I heard it somewhere but I don't know what the word is. I keep on hearing people say that but I don't know the word. Yeah. And that's because People mean so many different things when they say it, but basically, ordained has to do with something that God gave you special. Like if God appointed, well, I used to watch cowboys and Indian things on as a kid. I don't think you do. I don't think your generation does. But a sheriff has to have special, he's given special, uh, yeah, power and authority. And ordained has to do with special power, authority, and position that God gives you. And we call it ordained. Now, I ordain people into ministry. But even the words for that are by the power that God invests in me. God gives me the authority to recognize people like you who are Super special, super excellent, very, 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 to use your description, good. But people of excellence, you come here who you are, and what God has ordained, okay? But God says it this way, so that even those of us who understand English or Spanish or whatever language we read this in the Bible in, God ordained in the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Now, when church people talk about the Lamb of God, who are they talking about? They're talking about Jesus Christ. Pardon? Say it louder so they can hear you. So too. the sheep is loud. The sheep is Jesus. The shepherd is Jesus. Ah. And he not only we now know. Remember, I said how you go through things and you go through things, and then looking back, we understand. After he rose from the dead, he was walking with the disciples, and he told them explain things to them from the scripture that he had told them when he walked with them before he was put on the cross. Now they could understand what he was saying. But he was saying it before. Sometimes we have to live things out, look back, and have the understanding of what God even said. And then other times, look back and understand things that we didn't even know to think. You're going to know how to think things next year 
that don't even come to your mind this year. You'll think of it. For instance, can you write cursive? Remember I told you, when when I was seven, I could write cursive. When I was five, I could write cursive. But that's because I had a big brother that came and showed me. I didn't think there was anything special about it. Because to me, if if my big brother Chucky, and that's another thing I'll tell you about. If my big brother Chucky showed me how, then there wasn't anything to question about it. I just did it. And I also didn't know that it was special. I didn't know how special he was. Probably he didn't either. Because it was later that it was found out that he's a genius. And he really is. But he's my big brother. And if he shows me something, yeah, I could do it. I couldn't always do everything he showed me, but I always thought I could. So next year, you're, you're the big sister. But next year, I don't know when they teach cursive now. Back then... And when I was a teacher, did you know I was a teacher, a school teacher? And yeah. You still are. Well, you, when, when you're a school teacher, you never not. You never not. You know. Um, but yeah, I was trained as a. Actually, I was trained as a special ed teacher. Oh, no, it I wasn't was cool. Teacher. You might end up being a teacher. I was. I became a teacher because I wanted to be a lawyer, and I took pre-law courses and realized that some things about law that I didn't like and remember I said I didn't want to fuss and I knew that I would just always be fussing always fussing, 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 fussing I knew that I would be always upset about things, 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 things always mad about something and I also knew that um, as my mother used to tell me I didn't know how to keep my mouth shut if I thought something, it was coming out. And and for me, when I tried to hold it in, do you know you can't see the nose on your face? On the screen I can. Oh, on the screen you can. But just seeing you in your own mind, you can't see the nose on your own face. But it's there. Oh, don't do that. I let people know especially people of excellence, that if you're trying to see the nose on your own face, you look goofy. You look downright goofy. You look really stupid. And there's nothing stupid about you. Watch me look at the nose on my own face. Doesn't that look stupid? (laughs) Okay, doesn't it look goofy? Makes me look like I'm really goofy. Yeah, okay. And I tell people, especially people of excellence, that we don't see us the way God gives people to see us. We also don't see us ourselves the way God sees us. So that the things that... Do you need to sneeze? Oh, you're doing what I do when I need to sneeze, when my nose is tickling on the inside and I and I need to sneeze. So you're doing it for a whole other reason. (laughs) This one, Selah, is born for these times. The children of excellence that are born in this time are born for these times that they're in and are different than the previous generation of children of excellence. And one of the things, since I'm talking to people who are probably of the body of Christ, who have already given yourself to Jesus Christ, and probably are leaders in the kingdom, probably leaders in the church. However, we have a mindset about things of excellence that uh, we forget that while it's God who causes people to be so very, 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 very good, Yes, A plus plus plus, and what I she calls it A plus, I call it A plus, but I mostly call it people of excellence. And in the scripture, it's men of valor. That valor has to do with, and I'm going to use another big word, exploits. 
That just means things that you do and get done that are are just beyond what anyone would think about, but it actually got done. Kind of like um, superheroes. Yeah. I know who's a superhero. Who? God. Ah, yes! Yes, yes, yes. Now the thing of it is, God works in us. You know God works in you, yes? Mm -hmm. But do you, when God works in you, are you thinking that you're a superhero? Ah, now that's different. And that's part of what I'm letting you know, that the children of excellence are different than the previous generation of excellence. Most of the time, when you read in the scripture, of the people of valor, God is the one who lets you know that they're more excellent than the others. And I want you to know that God says it that way. Because if you say it that way, people are going to think you're proud. And you need to take it down a notch. Even if you don't know what those words mean, the attitude that it's said with lets you know that it makes you feel stuff that you don't even have the words for. thing of it is, people of excellence, remember that it's the word of God, the scripture that says, humble yourself under, under the mighty, this is sign language, by the way, mighty, mighty hand of God. We understand that. Of course, I don't think we do because of the rest of it. And he will. Not he might, not he could. He will exalt you. Even if you don't know what the word exalt means. But you can kind of get it just because of the way that I... ah, He will exalt you in due time. And most of us, we're so busy about making sure that somebody else is humble. Or even humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. That we're not preparing for the exaltation. We think that it's humble and it, it's what it means to be humble to stay under, under, under. Yeah, under the mighty hand of God. However, it's not just under. It's mighty so that you're mighty and it is the hand of God If you even looked up the scripture, now I'm a person who looks things up in scripture. You're waving to your friends? My dad. You're waving to your dad? I love you, dad. He's a person of excellence. So is your mom. When we're busy looking under and being under, we tend to forget to prepare for the exaltation When we look at Messianic scriptures, there are scriptures about Jesus being the Messiah, about the Son of God, Jesus, the Lamb, that sacrificed himself for us. So that not only is he the shepherd, on the cross, he was the Lamb dying for us. That the Lamb slain from the foundation of the word world, and even, what, did, what in the world does that mean? I mean, I have three, three doctorate degrees, which means undergraduate degrees to go with it. It means it graduated and graduated and graduated and graduated. You know, like I graduated and then graduated and then graduated and then I did it again in other subjects. And a lot of times when people hear me say that, they think I'm bragging. One of the things that I'll let you know is that That only happened because at the time that I was doing my studies, a woman wasn't accepted. And then when a woman was accepted, it was thought that women don't finish anything. They're they're just going to get married anyway. And so it was ignored when I would 
have certain courses. But then when I would actually finish, then they didn't want to give me the degree. And people in charge are what I call slick. When they want to do something or not do something that should be done. And so part of the slick was when you get a degree, like when you graduated, it meant that you had to complete studies in this. You had like reading. What are the things that you had to complete your studies in to get to graduate first grade? Now, you're saying math. In first grade, part of why I was insulted, remember that word I said insulted, is because they weren't teaching math. They were teaching arithmetic. And my big brother had taught me math. Arithmetic is a lower form of mathematics. Math. Yeah, the long, the full word is mathematics, but we shorten it and say math to make it simple. But arithmetic is one and one is two, you know. But math. I love math. What parts of math do you love? The pluses? Yeah. My brother used to love to make up pluses with pluses with pluses. A plus, A plus, A plus. Yeah. Well, that's another thing, because then that's letters and arithmetic, or letters and math, and he used to love to do that. That's a higher form of math. And I want to get back to, I don't want to end the program without getting to the children of excellence that are born in these times are born fully equipped for what God has given. And I'm going to say it again in case the enemy tried to take that out so it doesn't go out as word, so it doesn't go out as sound. But the children of excellence born in these times are born fully equipped for the times of things that must be dealt with that those of us who also are people of excellence, we don't even recognize. And this one, Selah here, when she was born, she stayed in touch with heaven side of things through her sisters, one who was born and died, as a baby, another who didn't get to be born. But what did she know? She's a baby. And I'm watching her talk to her sisters. And of course, I'm not thinking in terms of I'm a person of excellence for when I was born, that I can see that. Because everybody doesn't see that. To know that Most people think when babies are looking and looking around, they're just looking around and adjusting their eyes because that's what medical science, the doctors, tell us. And yet, I was able to see and understand. I mostly understood from the word, but then I would look at the babies and see. And we think think that you don't know and don't communicate. Yes, you do. Oh, yes, you do. And you especially did. And I watched the things that you communicated concerning. And I watched even, ah, watching Children of Excellence. Right now, you can get it that we like to say, we like to think that language develops at a certain age. Even the way we teach it is crazy because children can talk just fine by the time we start teaching language. Children can learn several languages at one time that we, by the time we get adults, we find it so hard and we think, We think it's so hard. I want to remind you of something. The way of the transgressor is hard, is what the scripture says. The transgressor is the person who's doing things the way that God didn't give. 
the thing of it is that when we belong to the church, we don't think of ourselves as a transgressor because we only ever mean to do things the way God's way, just like Moses. He wasn't trying to disobey God, telling God, I can't talk, I can't talk, I can't talk. As if what God told him, I made your mouth. Who are you telling you can't talk? I'm the one who equipped you and made you. The thing of it is, people of excellence, and you, Selah, A plus, 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 plus. A thousand pluses. A thousand, yeah. She doesn't even know that she is saying scripture right now about things that God has ordained and promised, promised. God keeps his promises. That's something you know. She doesn't even know You don't even know that you just quoted something that God says about what he does unto the third and fourth generation, what he does unto the thousandth generation. Your excellence goes that far. Now, when you're busy being excellent, you don't necessarily see it. And what I want to remind you, the church, and other people of excellence, and you, Selah, person of excellence, again, most of the things that God will show you have to do with more than what you would understand even if he told you and what you'll understand even when you get past it and look back and see and understand. However, you're born now, equipped now, ordained now for it, not just when she grows up. She moves in it now. And yes, she'll move in it even more. You, you move in it now. One of the things that you can notice with the babies born now is they speak. When we think it's, you keep saying words to them over and over. I just saw one the other day, how parents automatically say, oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. And this infant, like little like this, goes, I love you. I love you. It wasn't perfect, but it sure was so that you could understand that that baby, that little teeny weeny baby was repeating what mommy and daddy were saying. Mommy and daddy weren't trying to teach the baby to talk. People of excellence, you pick up things. (laughs) When I say pick up things, I'm talking about you know, you understand, and use what you know and understand. And that's even before you go to the first time in the scripture where God says that he filled somebody with the the Holy Spirit. Because you probably don't know, and you might not know, that one of God's patterns is that the first time he mentions a thing, everything about that is the core of it every time it's mentioned, even when he teaches you more. So like when you learn one and one is two, when you learn 21 and 21, You've learned how to count that because you learned one and one is two. You don't have to go back and think, uh, 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 one and one when you're seeing 21, 21, because you've already learned. Okay. So the first time God mentions a thing, whatever he gave and taught in that is with it every time he teaches us more. So the first time anybody was filled with the spirit of God, it tells us, and this is the core of what's there. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding to do, to complete the job. You're a person of excellence. You are equipped. That means you have the equipment. You have the tools. You have everything that you need in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, in your ability with your fingers. You have everything that you need to do what God ordained, not just for the now that you understand, but ordained in the Lamb, God's Son, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Who wakes up thinking about the foundation of the earth and what you're going to do for the... However, God looks at you, person of excellence. You are ordained and equipped for the times that you live in To think what we call outside the box. People of excellence, you always think outside the box. You always think what the trained and the wonderful. You think beyond. Because you think resolution and solution. 
according to the purpose of God. Even like with Sailor just now saying thousands, even when you don't know that particular scripture. It's still word. It's still truth. It's still God of heaven moving in the earth. <laughs> I love her.